very happy to be joined by Cameron Robinson. Hey, Denny. Scotland. Yes. Say something I in Scottish. I from Scotland. Did you? Uh, say freedom. Aye. Say Fre freedom. Thank you. <laughs> say freedom, Peter Brown. Freedom. Nice. Dan Hyde, say freedom. Freedom. Great. Okay. Aussie, good. American, uh, Scottish, and Irish. Actually, yours is closer to the film, really. Mm, yeah. It's so. the United Color Colors of Benetton of video games, <laughs> and we're here to talk about <laughs> PC, which is perhaps the most universally popular uh, platform, if you want to call it that, and then all a the bunch of other stuff as well. First of all, hardware. I want to ask you first, Peter Brown. Steam machines. This yeah. seems to be a. It keeps coming up every time we talk about conferences in particular, mm -hmm. where are we with steam machines? What uh, the hell is a steam machine? <laughs> they still haven't made this like digestible. Okay, a steam machine is a PC that's effectively priced to compete with consoles. But what it really is is a machine that runs the Steam OS and supports Valve's controller. Valve has now delayed that to 2015. Yeah, uh, like everything. Like everything. Yeah. Uh, they're making incre incremental improvements to Steam OS. Um, but again, it's kind of like a Linux box, right? Mm. So it doesn't really support a lot of the games that you'd find on Windows. So honestly, right now, if you've got Steam installed on your Windows PC and you run big picture mode and you've got a 360 controller, you've effectively got a Steam machine. Uh, Cameron Robinson, I know yes. you were at EVE FanFest in uh, wonderful Iceland only mm -hmm. two weeks ago. I played um, Oculus before, never Valkyrie, yeah. um, on like one of the older units, and putting on the DK2, especially having that like depth camera, like that was the biggest thing for me, because mm. I got quite a lot of nausea walking around that old Tuscan villa, but not yeah. in Valkyrie at all, because you, you stick it on and you immediately you, you look at your avatar, yeah. and it really helps like place and get that sense of presence. So it's, or it was for me at least. It's weird because this time last year, Oculus was still very much a this might be a piece of technology that people start to use. Yeah. Since that's happened, like we've had this. Massive buyout by Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, it's now you know Project Morpheus has been announced and everything else. What I hate saying this, <laughs> and I know Peter's going to jump on my neck and bite my lungs out when Can't I say wait. this. <laughs> he does that a lot. Is VR actually not going to be a fad this time around? Is this something that people are we're going to see more and more of, and it'll be like inexorably tied to gaming? Yeah, I think like the interesting thing is that it's really kind of uniting the PC as a platform. The PC has never really had anything at least at E3, to sort of unify yeah. what's on we'll show. Adam Orth, you know the guy who was unceremoniously dismissed from Microsoft after yes. um, his tweets, he's working on a game that's going to be at E3. It's not a space sim, but you play as a spaceman in a space suit that's running out of air. Oh, so it's, it's sort terrifying. of like gravity oh, simulator. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to be something that's like at least a unique first person experience. Cool. EA, talking about weird first person um, video game uh, worlds, are we going to see Mirror's Edge 2 this year? I don't think you're going to see that and Star Wars Battlefront. Battlefront no. is definitely going to be there. I think they're going to save Mirror's Edge 2 for a bit later. And I think there's a lot further off anyway. So. Yeah. Well, there is also the question that Microsoft has this third-party exclusive that's supposed to get people really excited. Okay. I mean, I have a few theories, but Mirror's Edge 2 could be one of them. I think even just teasing that a little bit more mm -hmm. might give them the sort of excitement that they, and the buzz that they need from the audience. You think that's going to be a Microsoft exclusive? It could be. I mean, you know, they essentially, if they're saying that, look, there's a third-party game that's coming that's going to get people really excited, it's got to be something that we already know about, like mm -hmm. in terms of a franchise, right? Something that people want. And we've literally seen nothing except for this trailer at E3. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like nothing out, nothing at all. So it'd be, it'd be great to have. But I almost feel like it might be a better tactic for them to continue showing nothing because this trailer was so good. And it just reminded everyone that it does exist and it's mm. a game that, you know, everyone, it was a darling game that everyone wanted last year. Unless they're going to show us loads, maybe it would be better to. I think it'd be unfortunate it. if it was a Microsoft exclusive because yeah. this is the kind of thing you want on PlayStation with Morpheus and with, you know, Oculus. Yeah, if yeah. They, obviously, that's going to take a lot of Is it really? Do in. you want to be getting sick all over yourself? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if you didn't get sick in Valkyrie, I think this could work. Uh, what about uh, Battlefield Hardline? We've already seen stuff leaked, or Omaha, as they didn't want people yeah. to, to know about it. Um, yeah, I know they're announcing some stuff after E3. Do you think it's going to have much of a presence at the show? I think it has to. Yeah? Yeah. I think it's just sort of like a thoroughly underwhelming concept, really. Yeah. I mean, like, it's, it's not a mainline Battlefield title, and Battlefield's all about scale. And every time they've tried to go, like, close quarters, urban, it's sort of been like, oh, okay, that's fun for a distraction. But if they focus an entire game on it, um, Probably maybe something cool can come out of it. I mean, I did like the special forces weapons, like the uh, grappling hook and zipline and that kind of thing. Yeah. But I'm just not really that interested in what it actually is, as we've seen so far. Uh, Dragon Age? Any hype for Dragon Age? 
Mm, well, we haven't really seen much in terms of gameplay, and I think everyone just burned by the previous. You know, what was what was the one that nobody liked? Two, well, two. two, yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, uh, yeah. and yeah. So this is Inquisition. Yeah, this is Inquisition. Yeah. I th it basically, from the trailer, it looks like it's there's Oblivion Gate is opened, or they've got some different name for it. That's what it looks like. Demons <laughs> are spilling out onto the world, Aww. and you've got to. I mean, it could be really great, but all about how they execute the combat and whether they stick with their their old what they do best, like proper R RPG, mm. or whether they're gonna try and action it up again and disappoint people. I love that they can't figure out whether to put a number on it or origins or a subtitle yeah, or that yeah, kind of right. thing. Mm. It really shows that they actually don't know what they're doing with that series. It's a funny yeah. one and yeah. it's changed hands a bunch of time at this stage as well, right? It's is still it? Bioware. Is it Bioware still? Yeah. Well, I guess Bioware has been shaken up so much over the yeah. past couple yeah. of years. A game from uh, 2K that... Uh, see, anyone who's played this at a trade show has said it's absolutely incredible, but it feels like there's hardly any information about Evolve like out there. Uh, it's it's almost like they made an entire game out of the tank combat from Left 4 Dead and oh, really? really sort of like deep dived how can we make this asymmetric multiplayer uh, work really well and be balanced as well. I think like the balance is the key thing that's going to make or break this. What I played was pretty balanced and you do have clutch plays, there are lots of like skillful moments and that kind of thing. Um, I think that it's it's going to be a really really interesting one. So which build did you play? Because recently they, they changed it, didn't they? They added yeah. Before like all that, I played like the first reveal build. So right. Okay. Before they so, changed the class. So they have things. already experimented. I think a bit yes. with how they're going to balance. And it. I like that they are flexible like that mm. because they obviously know what's going to be you know best for the titles. There's actual like uncut gameplay. Here is how it actually plays in motion. So yeah. that's the perfect way to actually see that. And they showed a bunch of PAX East as well. You know, and there's a lot of covers that came yeah. out of that. So. And that was a public event, obviously, right? Yeah. So people have seen it right now. I think this is right, like you said, the time to really put it out there. Because it's one of the few games that's coming out this calendar year that people to get excited about, I guess. Yeah. Um, Ubisoft, they're the last of the sort of the, the big six or whatever, or big five at this stage that, um, that have their own press conferences. Uh, it seems like most of their announcements have slipped out early. <laughs> like Assassin's Creed Unity was the first one a couple of months ago. Yeah. Are you guys just excited about that at all? Not I really thoroughly. want to be, but... But I'm, I'm not. I'm pretty burnt out yeah. on Assassin's Creed. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Did you play Black Flag? Yes, I did. And the sailing was great, and that was awesome. But every time I had to get out of the boat, I was like, oh, God, not again. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've tried like three or four times to get back in yeah. and actually l allow it to grab me, and it's just yeah. never happened. And this one, they don't they haven't even said what is the thing that is going to make this unique. You know? Yeah. So All we know is right now, it seems like Revolutionary Paris, mm -hmm. and you're an assassin. And that there is a next-gen version, and then one that is separate that is coming out on current or <laughs> previous. Oh, come on! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Is that where we're at? <laughs> um, it's the other thing, I guess, that one of the more interesting rejuvenations of a franchise that they've done recently is, is Far Cry. Like Far Cry Three is was one of my favorite games come out that year. Absolutely outstanding. They've released the the concept image of the new one, uh, which rubbed some people up the wrong way, uh, but presumably they're going to show some of this uh, at their conference. If I see well. a single prompt that says, you are leaving the mission area, I'm just going to be <laughs> like, no, I'm <laughs> Are you just waiting for another burn down crops full of weed while... Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's weird. Place. Like, Far Cry as a series has sort of been all over the place, you know? Yeah. And three was sort of a combination of both elements of two and one, so it seems like they've found their footing, and this is going to be sort of like Far Cry 3, take two. Two. Are you guys excited about Far Cry 4? Oh, really, so much. Yeah, three was my probably my best game from last year. Yeah. So four, and the ability to combine the jungle stuff with climbing around mountains and mm. elephants and rhinos as well, I think. Here's the thing about Ubisoft, though. Like, they want lightning to strike twice. I mean, you saw how yeah. they revealed Watch Dogs and then they revealed Division in yes. exactly the same way. They're going to try and have a new Vars, and I don't think they're going to be able to live up to that because that was sort of like... Um, Flash in the pan, you know, like one time thing. It was amazing. Yeah, that yeah. presentation was great. Mm. So they've got a couple of other games that I guess are. The, the, they've got actually got a lot of games on the go at the moment. The Crew is another one they've been shopping around for mm -hmm. a while now. Have any guys played The Crew? Not yet. No. no. It, it looks like Borderlands in cars. Yeah, I, I feel like it doesn't seem particularly interesting. It just looks a little like Rivals for me as well, except mm. in a more open world. I mean, I, it's, I was kind of cops robbers thing going yeah. on. I was kind yeah, of hoping yeah. I'd get that like Burnout Paradise hook from it, maybe like if it's, if it's interesting in that way, like in a new sort of like social way. Doesn't look as just like fun and carefree, you know? It's sort of like uh, it's a big side, Peter Brian. What was that for? <laughs> <laughs> That's huge. <laughs> Say well, what's in your mind. I don't know. It's between Drive Club and the Crew. I mean, I, I you know I miss like really like core racing games. And for me, that's the Forza, and that's Gran Turismo. And I like when those come out, and I just... These games that come out that try to experiment with that, they show up, and then they disappear, and no one cares about it. Yeah. And so I have a really hard time getting excited for something that's... I mean, like, what... 
Yeah. What am I looking at here? I don't know. <laughs> a car video game. <laughs> I hope I hope whoever's working on this is not the same guys who did the car driving or the, the car driving. Uh, the, the handling models in Watch Dogs. Yeah. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, so perhaps the game that's got the most hype around it, uh, especially in relation to uh, um, E3 in particular, uh, is The Division. Uh, mm. When they showed it off. Was it two years ago now? The first time or was it last? It was last year. Last year. Last year? Yeah. Dude shutting car door with his hand. Mm. Everyone freaking the hell out. Um, we're not going to see this game for a while. What do they need to show this year to keep people entertained? About I think it? the thing is, like, they're really good at their first reveals being slow and sedate and really sort of absorbing and immersive. Yeah. So what they're going to show this year is the action side of it. They're going to show massive firefights and. You know, those kinds of uh, division versus division engagements that they've been sort of hinting at at the end of that first trailer. Mm. Well, and one of the things, too, that like, they've been saying, or I guess the rumor is that they've been working so much on the tech side of things that the actual game development is still pretty early. Yeah. So I'm really curious to see if what we see this year will be drastically, you know, drastically different from what was presented last year. I don't think it'll be too far off the mark, but I expect it's, it's going to look a little bit different. Mm in terms of the setting and the mechanics and how everything sort of plays together. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions coming in from folks. I want to just uh, get a few of them uh, done before we continue. Uh, Blurred Cube asks, any chance of Rockstar showing up? Rockstar are funny when at E3. They tend to not usually play that game. Yeah. They don't need to. Yeah. Yeah. So probably no. Nope. Didn't they say at an earnings call that they had something coming out? Before uh, the next financial year, Probably like Red Dead for PC, if anything. Yeah. But would it yeah, be, or would it be, or Grand Theft Auto Five for PC at this stage? No. Do you no know? way. Because there's rumors about the next gen GTA Five. There's rumors about next gen Skyrim, sure. like one that might be made specifically for the console. They'll do next gen GTA Five before PC GTA Five, I think. You don't think they do them at the same time? Maybe. No. No. Separate them up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's weird. Rockstar, one of those companies that kind of just do their own thing. They tend not to really need E3 to, to mm -hmm. show stuff off. And another one the chat's been asking about, uh, Hasoon asks, uh, Mass Effect. Do we see something, a new Mass Effect this year? Or at least like a glimmer at one? I think that you may get, sort of like we had with Mirror's Edge 2 at the end of that press conference, you'll probably get some um, Mass Effect subtitle, whatever it is they're going with, whether it's like the First Contact prequel or uh, yeah. you know, Hundreds of Years in the Future sequel. Um, it's probably not going to be... Uh, playable at all. Uh, I don't know if you'll see any gameplay, but you're definitely going to get some kind of teaser, I think. Yeah, another game we're likely to see as uh, either or both press conferences, and probably a lot of in terms of uh, stage show presence as well, is Destiny. Uh, Bungie have been sort of, they showed off a, a little bit last year that got people excited about it. I, is it just me, or am, am I, is this game not as exciting as I was kind of, I'm not, I, f I feel like I haven't ho hopped on the hype train with this one yet. I mean, that's sort of the unanimous impression that came out of, I think, an event that happened about mm. a month ago. Yes. Everyone sort of got their hands on it and was like, all right, it's an MMO. Yeah. What, uh, f I don't know what's, what's really different here. You know, and that sort of seemed. I mean, the world is supposed to be interesting, right? You've got some of the, you know, the bungee things that that are persisting here from the Halo universe in terms of aesthetic and stuff. But is it going to be something great, greater than just another MMO made by Bungie? They've just yeah. been or so vague MMO. about how their shared world and you know connectedness actually yeah. works that I don't really actually understand how this is multiplayer, how this is single player, and, and you know, like how these things all interact and are persistent. So. Yeah. And uh, I feel like people maybe feel like they've been burned on Watch Dogs a bit because mm. a lot of that, there was the hinting as like these vague yep. recollections of what that you know, connectedness was going to be. And in the end, it was just people can enter your game if yeah. you want them yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll see. We've got a bunch more games to go through here. Uh, a game that I am really, really hoping is announced. I have heard that it probably won't be. Bethesda have since come out and said they're not going to announce anything. What are the chances of seeing Fallout 4 tease this year? Well, I think P. Hines was, was kind of, he kind of confirmed we're not going to see anything, didn't he? He was talking about, ba was it Battlecry? What's, what's the, they announced some other game they're yeah. going to be talking okay. about, um, yeah. which means we're probably not. I was also kind of gunning for a mention of uh, yeah. Dishonored 2, but that's probably just me. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, if it's no new IP, then the rumors of the Skyrim HD version might still, that could still be a thing, if that's a thing. What would you think about that? Cameron, who has a weekly show about Skyrim, <coughs> like you're probably a game God. A for like, people who are interested in that. Would you play a, a, a PS4 and Xbox One version uh, of Skyrim? No, I don't see the point because you don't even need a powerful PC these days to play Skyrim that looks great yeah. using EMBs and everything. Like You can build a pretty budget PC. You know, I, don't know, I don't want a HD Skyrim. I want a Skyrim pre-installed with all the most amazing mods so I don't have to do it myself. <laughs> right. You know, that would be more valuable. I, I guess. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's, that's like, you, you guys have been playing Skyrim now for like oh. three years off the back of the fact <laughs> that... Far off, yeah. Like, <laughs> three mods. years in November. Like, three yeah. years, yeah, like... Isn't that the problem? Like I remember the Unreal Tournament three on P on PS three you could mod, but like just modding on 
consoles has never really ever been a thing. No, I think it's just too complicated with um, you know the potential for damaging your, your yeah. game, and you know the, no one wants to be liable for that. So yeah, I don't think we'll see that. But um, Civilization Beyond Earth, anyone anyone hyped up about that? Oh one? yeah, totally. I mean, I haven't, I haven't played Civilization since three because cool. they've just been too similar. Yeah, yeah. I did play Alpha Centauri back in the day, mm. and I love Civilization. I love space. So yeah, this this has got me quite excited. We don't. I want to see. I want to get some proper details about like how the mechanics are going to work, like how you start it off, what type of units you're going to get, mm. how the like encounters with the aliens that are on the planets are going to be. Is it just going to be like barbarian encounters? Is it going to be different? I really want to get some details. But I'm quite excited. You couldn't play as the aliens in Alpha Centauri, could you? You were just you were, well, or the the the. I guess it wasn't really aliens, was it? It was just the world. Yeah. The, like the world elements, like the animals and creatures, wasn't it? Yeah, I think they were just like encounters, basically. I want. I want to know. Alpha Centauri. <sighs> been so long. Game I played a lot of, Hotline Miami. Hotline Miami 2. Do you think we're going to see some of that here? We've got, we've got to. It's, it's it's coming out soon, right? Uh, that's the thing. Like At this yeah. stage, I feel like it's yeah. coming out in a couple of months, right? Yeah, they've been showing it off. It was at PAX East again, like back in April. And it Does was, it right. have a console exclusivity thing going already? It's, I'm trying to think. I think it's only on Play, PlayStation and PC, uh, is right? Is it timed exclusive on PS? I, I should have looked this up before we started. I played it on PC. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, I'm probably going to yeah. play it on PC too. Let's see. Is there any other games that uh, uh, you guys are, are interested in? I you? think that Square will show a bit more of the next Days X. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. Days X Universe, whatever they're calling it. They need something to kind of prop themselves up, and I don't really know what they have yet, so. They're going to show some more Final Fantasy XV for sure. Woo! Witcher 3? Well, they, you know, oh, yeah. that, that can get a lot of people really excited. I mean, that game has been in development for eight years now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then there is The Witcher 3. Witcher 3. Yeah, that's, Witcher 3 that's, well. my, that's my most anticipated thing to see of the whole show. I want to see one more Witcher 3. Awesome. Well, uh, from the sounds of it, we've been talking a hell of a bunch of mess about video games for the past hour and a bit. Uh, there's no shortage of uh, cool stuff to see at E3 this year, so make sure you stick on GameSpot.com all next week. Now!